Sometimes it's a lot easier dealing with six cubic maps rather than one spherically transformed image. So in this tutorial we'll have a look at two example setups for cubic maps or also called six packs. One will be a card based environment so you can actually use the cards by cubic properties to distort the resulting environment. And the other one will be a shader based cube which will enable you to use advanced projection techniques. So let's get started by converting this lat long into a set of cubic maps. If you already have those cubic maps, obviously you can skip this step. But let's assume the client sent us this lat long and now we have to somehow turn this into a cubic environment. Usually what I use is the spherical transform node and simply convert that incoming lat long map to a cube. And if I do this, I make sure that my output is a square resolution. So I'm just going to pick uh, so it's a bit low. Well, let's go for 512, 512. Um, just to make sure that my output is not distorted. And if you don't change any of the rotational parameters here or here, then you're essentially looking down the minus Z axis, which is Nuke's default front view. So let's put that on a card to see what I'm talking about. And here you can see we're looking down the negative Z axis. And now we need to push out this thing to start creating our cube. The way I usually do it is using the built-in projection camera and set the focal length to 45 and the horizontal aperture to 90, which will give me a square virtual camera frustum that this card is projected through. And now I can use the Z slider to push this card out into space through a virtual projection camera. So let's say we put that at just one unit away. So we create a normalized cube. And um, now I'm just going to copy those two guys, hook them up again, and rotate the card by 180 degrees over Y. So it gives me the opposite view. Obviously, I also need to rotate the spherical transform to make sure I'm grabbing the correct part of the incoming lat long. So I'm also rotating this guy by 180 degrees over Y. And you can see the texture changed to reflect the correct area. Now, since the value, the rotational values in the card and the spherical transform are always going to be the same to make sure it matches the lat long. I'm just going to control drag this rotational parameter from the spherical transform into my card. And I'll also do the same thing with the X rotation. And just clear out my bin here and connect those two cards to a scene so I can actually see them all at once. Right. So now that I've got those two things wired up through expressions, I'll just turn on the expression links here. I can now copy it and paste it, wire it up, and only change the rotation in the spherical transform. Let's say we change that to 90 to create one of the side views, and you'll see the card pops into, into place and the texture updates at the same time, thanks to our expression setup. So let's paste that again and create the fourth side. So that's going to be minus 90, card, texture, done. So let's just do that two more times to create the caps. So now I'm going to reset the Y rotation and rotate by 90 degrees over X to create the top view. And one more time, and this time we will rotate by minus 90 degrees over X to create the bottom view. So now if I home my camera into the origin and pan around, you'll actually never know that we're inside of a cube rather than a sphere until you actually select something. Oops. So the benefit of this is that you can now go into one of the cards and actually use the deformation parameters. For example, if I set this to bicubic, I now have my bicubic handles here that I could use to straighten up horizon lines, for example, or simply do a pretty fast and efficient transformation on my high resolution environment. But what if I wanted to create a shader based environment because I need custom geometry to work with this? Let me just copy those uh, six pack tiles. And instead of creating a card, I'm now going to create a camera.
and just like we did before with the card I'm gonna set the camera to 45 millimeter focal length and 90 mil for the aperture to create a camera with a 90 degree field of view which is necessary for our cube and I'll just set the far clipping plane to 1 to clean up my view and here you can actually see what is going to happen we'll have the cube and we'll have the camera project those tiles into space so if I now create a projection node project 3D and hook up my camera and my spherical transform we are now ready to project this front view tile onto any sort of geometry we'd like so let's create a cube and actually look at this we're still looking at the old card setup here so that's our new cube here and uh, I'll just scale that up let's just make that a bit bigger to differentiate from the previous card setup and uh, if I just assign this shader here you'll see that we are now projecting the cubic tile into a single piece of geometry so let's repeat this for the other sides I'll copy paste that attach the projection node and rotate the projection camera by 180 degrees so this guy now projects the back face of the cube and in order to combine those projections let's clean up a little bit here I can use well actually just get it from the menu 3d shader merge material material or shader same thing in nuke so if I put this on top of this and actually it doesn't really matter if this is, this is an over or an under because those tiles don't really overlap and uh, now attach the merge we can now see both sides so let's actually just duplicate that like we did before for the remaining four tiles give, give ourselves some space here push that over and copy paste put that in here attach the shader and update our shader on the environment nothing has changed just yet because we haven't rotated our camera so we'll update the rotational value to 90 to great to create uh, the first side view and just keep going like that paste attach the nodes and rotate to get the other side there is the new projection camera and here is the result so let's just quickly do that for top and bottom reset the Y rotation 90 degrees and X to get the top view and finally we'll get the bottom view which is still open here so attach the shader update the shader on the cube and rotate the camera by minus 90 degrees in X to project the bottom so now we've got our projection shader that is actually creating the cube and we can now attach it to any sort of geometry so instead of attaching it to a cube I could attach it to this piece of custom geometry that is just a very rough representation of what's happening on this rooftop if I just select those things we've got a bit of the wall over here and another piece of wall over there and the ground plane and if I now kill that cube here and actually attach the shader to our custom piece of geometry which obviously needs a bit of work but you'll get the idea go to 3d shader apply material attach that here and now you see how the six pack of cameras is projecting those cubic maps onto my custom geometry and we can actually start building a projected environment that will give us some sort of parallax when looking through a translated camera